Hi, my name is Flavina Santonio, and I'm going to present our work conducted at Ribeirão Preto Medical School, University of Sao Paulo, Brazil, at LAFAP Laboratory, entitled Intravaginal Electrical Stimulation as an Intervention in Women Who Are Unable to Perform a Voluntary Pelvic Muscle Contraction, an Assessor Blinded Randomized Control, control Trial. I have no financial or commercial interest to disclose. There is evidence level 1 and grade A recommendation that pelvic muscle training should be the first therapeutic option for treatment of female stress urinary incontinence. However, an essential requirement for initiation pelvic muscle training is the ability to contract the pelvic muscles correctly. Although carefully thought about the anatomy and function of the pelvis, more than 30% of women are unable to perform a correct pelvic muscle contraction. Manual and biofeedback techniques have been used to provide improvement in pelvic muscle contractions. However, to date, there is limited knowledge on the effect of intravaginal electrical stimulation to improve the ability to contract the pelvic muscle. Therefore, the objectives of this study were to assess the efficacy of intravaginal electrical stimulation to provide a voluntary pelvic muscle contraction in a woman unable to contract. Our secondary aim was to assess the effect of this intervention on the urinary incontinence re reports. This was an assessor-blinded RCT. Women over 18 years of age with pelvic dysfunction were recruited. In the first session, demographic data were collected and a standardized pelvic muscle assessment using vaginal palpation was performed. Only participants with pelvic muscle function grades zero or one assessed by big digital palpation on the modified Oxford scale were included. Eligible participants were randomized to either the intervention group or to the control group. The primary outcome measure was pelvic muscle strength using the NOS scale, and the secondary outcome was urinary incontinence assessed by ICIQ short form. All participants were assessed at baseline and after eight weeks. The intervention was performed once a week using biphasic current and the stimulation parameters are described here. In the last 10 minutes of each session, voluntary pelvic muscle contractions were requested along with the involuntary contractions caused by the stimulator. It was considered that participants who had a score greater than or equal to according to the MOS acquire the ability to contract the pelvic muscle. Here we can see the flow chart of the participants in this study. A total of 172 women were recruited. 64 meet the inclusion criteria and agreed to participate in this study. 61 women provided data that could be included in the regression analysis. There were three loss to follow up. Demographic data are presented here. All participants from both groups had urinary incontinence. Here I demonstrated the number and percentage of grades evaluated by the MOS after the intervention in each group. Ability to contract the pelvic muscle was acquired by 35.7% of the participants in the intervention group versus 12.1% in the control group. The analysis using logistic regression demonstrate that the intervention group had 4.0 higher odds of being able to voluntarily contract pelvic muscle in comparison with the control group. The mean ICIQ score in, on the intervention group and control group before and after the intervention is presented here. After the intervention, a higher percentage of women still reported urinary incontinence in both groups. Analysis using mixed regression model showed a statistically significant difference between groups, but no difference between time and a borderline significant interaction group time. In conclusion, these results suggest that the use of intravaginal electrical stimulation together with attempts of simultaneous voluntary pelvic muscle contraction with the stimulus can facilitate ability to voluntarily contract the pelvic muscle. However, the protocol with only one training session per week did not reduce 
ICIQ SUM score. This approach can be considered for women who are unable to contract their PELFOR prior to engage in PELFOR muscle training program. Thank you.